If you've been playing guitar for any length of time, I can almost guarantee that you'll have heard of boss pedals. Equally loved by beginners, pros, and everyone in between, the iconic Japanese tone suppliers have been making pedals and appearing on pedal boards since the mid 70s. With so many to choose from, it was quite hard to actually think of which pedals to chat about in this video. So that's why I was really grateful that my bud Ray actually asked everybody at Guitar Guitar what their favorite boss pedals are. To check out what he had to say about it, he's got his definitive list that you can check out on the Guitar Guitar website and the link will be in the description which you can check out after this video. Did we decide on the same pedals? Of course we didn't, but that's why bosses stood the test of time with their absolute tonal smorgasbord. Smorgas pedal board? Yeah, sorry about that. But it just does prove that there's something for everyone, so let's get started. So kicking us off, this might not be the most exciting pedal, but let's admit it. What's more exciting than being perfectly in tune? Nothing. That's what. While other boss pedals, you know, will immediately alter your sound and it's very, very, you know, apparent that they are on. For anybody who's done any form of gigging or live playing, I think you'll understand how important this pedal is and it really should be one of your, the very first ones that you purchase. Not only does the TU3 keep your guitar absolutely perfectly in tune and is very, very visible on dark stages, but it also does have a couple other functions as well that can come really in handy in super clutch situations live. When you turn this pedal on, if you're going through through the normal output does actually act as a bit of a mute so if you've got say a quiet part of the song that you don't want any unwanted string noise or say just your singer's absolutely buttoning up the crowd and you don't want any feedback playing then hit this pedal and you've got total silence. Along with that, the TU3 actually can power several other boss pedals as well. At the top here, along with its input for power, it does have an output as well that you can use a daisy chain and it'll power a few boss pedals as well. So if you have a dedicated power supply just for this, then you can power several other pedals and it can almost be your power supply for your board. Let's hear it in action. No surprise here, but the DS1 distortion got quite a few mentions from our colleagues, not only because of its iconic status. Checking in with quite a few people in Guitar Guitar, it was actually the very first pedal that we bought and it started us on that guitar pedal journey. The common thread between all of us really was the fact that we're all huge Nirvana fans and that was sort of our first step in the guitar playing. So of course, going down that tone rabbit hole, finding out that Kurt Cobain used the DS1, well, it was a no brainer that it had to be our first one to buy because it meant we could play along with all those iconic songs. Now we did a little bit of a deep dive on the DS1 that I'll just link to above my head there. So if you do want to get, you know, the sort of deeper dive on that from Mark who works at Roland, then do click that video. But for this portion, I actually just wanted to give the DS2 a little bit of time in the limelight. Used by Kurt Cobain 2 as well as John Frusciante, the DS2 still gives you those absolutely searing tones you would expect from a boss distortion with the addition of a turbo option. What is the turbo option? Let's find out. <laughs> Did you know that it was actually Boss who released the very first digital stomp box delay back in 1983? Well, now you do. And with that knowledge, it's only right that we give their digital delay range, in this case the DD8, a little bit of time to shine. The DD8 is the recent compact version of Boss's flagship DD digital delay range. And this one is absolutely packed to the gills full of features that it could really be your all-in-one delay pedal if you do need it. From pristine digital repeats to nice warm analog delays inspired by their classic DM2, as well as modulated repeats, as well as a shimmer feature. If you were to have only one delay pedal, then this one isn't a bad choice. Did I mention it's got a loop or two?
there's any pedal on this list that can be considered the Marmite of the Boss catalogue, then I think the Metal Zone takes that title. An outlier of the Boss catalogue since its release in 1991, with the same age by the way. But where I think that sort of attitude towards the Metal Zone comes from is more than likely quite a few of us, you know, were listening to metal back when we were teenagers, we bought one of them and immediately took it home, plugged it into our 10 watt practice amps, and wondered why we weren't getting these absolute gargantuan walls of noise from those tiny little amps. But if you've never tried this in front of a larger amp and just set it just right, you might be missing out on one of the most mammoth guitar sounds that you've ever heard. One of the cool features about the Metal Zone is that it's got maybe one of the most wide EQ scopes out of all of its compact siblings. Even by just tweaking these knobs ever so slightly, there's so much scope for you to find that absolutely perfect guitar tone. Even if you don't like it, you have to respect the MT2, and that's, you know, that's just gospel, really. A very quick personal shout out to the Boss HM2 also. If you haven't heard the iconic chainsaw tone that this can produce, then please, after this video, go and hear that. Confession time, I actually used to hate chorus effects on guitars, I just used to think it sounded a bit corny. That's why I was really glad in the past couple of years, with the help of the Boss CE2, that entire opinion is turned around and I absolutely love chorus now. The CE2 not only being a super cool effect to use, but it's also got a really interesting history, as it's based on the legendary chorus that is in the Roland Jazz Chorus, and is actually the successor to Boss's very, very first stomp box, which was the CE1. CE2 not only being a super cool sounding effect, it also has a really interesting story, as it's based on the chorus that is in the legendary Jazz Chorus by Roland. It's also the successor to Boss's very first stomp box effects pedal, which was the CH1 Chorus. Giving you some immediate 80s vibes when you kick this on with a clean channel, and in all honesty, adding this to any guitar track can make it just sound that much bigger and cool. Think of like modern bands like Turnstile, they're kind of bringing that back. The CE2 is actually part of the Boss Waza Craft line now. Again, much like the DS1, if you do want to know a little bit more about that, I'll leave the link just above my head there, and that'll take you to our deep dive on that. The CE2 Waza Craft pedal actually manages to squeeze in some additional features to this pedal. Not only the sound of the CE2, which you'll hear in this demo, but it also has the CE1 sound in there, so if you want that more vintage sounding chorus, and also a vibrato feature, so it's kind of packing a lot just into this small package. <laughs> Back to drives, we have the BD2 Blues Driver. Considered to be a Swiss 
army knife when it comes to the drives in the Boss Compact family. The BD2 may seem by name that it's only really, a, you know, an overdrive that could be used for blues playing, but certainly there's a lot more hiding under just those simple three knob construction there. Set the gain down low and it can be your subtle always on pedal that's there ready to kind of take you that over edge of breakup if you need to, or actually turn the gain up and it could absolutely be your main distorted tone. Comparing the BD2 to say something like the Super Overdrive and Bosses line, they're both kind of in that similar territory. Certainly I feel the Blues Driver can kind of carry you just over that edge, like when it comes to distorted tones, a little bit more than the Super over Overdrive. But then certainly reducing the gain on this, cranking up the level and putting the tone in right, it can absolutely tighten an already distorted amp up and just be that little extra bit of secret sauce that you might need. I'd be here all day if I was to list all the pedals that got a mention. The BF3 Flanger, the SY1 synth pedal, the TR2 Tremolo, just to name a few. So why don't you, down below in the comments, let us know what your favourite boss pedal is. And certainly if you want to see a follow up on this, we can definitely pull out some more of these compact pedals and just kind of go over them and hang out with them for a little while. And while you're down there, of course, give us a like, give us a subscribe, that would really, really help the channel me. Truly, truly appreciate it. But until next time, I've been Kieran, and this has been a selection of some of our favourite boss pedals. Have a great day.